I think every work before I start making anything has almost like this huge research period that precedes it into every single element that then comes to constitute the work, um, both in terms of the images, um, the performances, the people, the gestures, and really importantly also the sound. I also think of cameras not principally as devices to make images, but primarily as devices to set up situations and relationships. And the camera is never neutral within that, so the camera is always active and a participant and an active device that shapes the situation that is being set up. 1118 really started off as a speculation. The idea, or the question rather, whether looking at a person over a significant period in their development, whether doing that through film could reveal anything significant about this very contested notion of identity. And the question really is, do you stay the same emotionally, mentally, in terms of your psychological continuity over seven years? And I don't really have the answer. It's, it, that to me is the sort of the open question. But I do really see more than anything is this incredible change in her performance towards the camera and her understanding of how to produce a self to the camera and how to produce a version of identity My work was much more overtly feminist in sort of some of the earlier years. I only worked with women ever. You know, I only photographed women, I only made projects about women, I was only interested in making work with women, and I was incredibly engaged in the feminist practice and discourse. And then I think um, over the past maybe 15 years that sort of loosened and broadened out, partly because I was working much more, less with individuals, much more with groups, mostly with strangers, and I became more interested in kind of notions around the kind of sociality of who we are as human beings and kind of ideas around collective experiences and community. So the, f the focus on women as subjects dropped away a little bit, but I think it is always there. And I think at heart, I will always be, like most women, a feminist. My invention comes from life. I am very firmly based in the observation of people and an interest in the real life permutations that people experience and, and in a sense perform and act out. So I think the reality of people's lives is incredibly important to the meaning of the work. So I need to have the space to observe and to participate in other people's experiences. Twelve came about through an invitation from a curator who had known a long, long time ago, from much earlier in my career, with a one-line one email whether I might be interested in working on a project on addiction and recovery. And my immediate thought very quickly was this could either be phenomenally interesting but also is really kind of full of potential cliches and, and kind of problematic content. And we then got in touch with three treatment centres in London, Liverpool and Oxford. So I proposed the project, I said that I wanted to make a film video work with them that would look into some of their own narratives but that were ultimately would always be co-authored by them so it was very much about portraiture. You were my best friend and I would like to say it's been nice knowing you but really you were my worst enemy in disguise. Goodbye alcohol, I hope you rot in hell. Dead. These two women are together in a women's only treatment centre and it was left completely up to each participant what they wanted to contribute, how they wanted their story to be presented. And we set up a camera and they decided how they wanted to sit and then Debbie started reading her letter. When Rachel sings it back to her, that's really spontaneous. She just, she listened to it and then she sings it back to her. I no longer have to have you as my secret friend. You had turned on me, and now I can call on my own. I think the work relies on, benefits from, and it's also built on the contribution of other people. 
I'm, I'm not devising all this by myself. I'm working with these people and they co-author these sections with me. To me, Dance on Night London is, is absolutely political work. On the, on the face of it, and when you first watch it, it looks joyful and celebratory, and it's this kind of great coming together of people in a sort of collective experience. And dancing in public, and dancing in public with many, many strangers, is one of the most powerful experiences you can have in terms of this sort of sense of owning the city and reclaiming space. I think, to me, the work is very much about saying exactly we need to kind of embrace diversity. We need to kind of, we need to celebrate that we can actually share spaces and remain individual and believe in our own cultures and languages and that these languages can coexist. It's always a balance between the work having a sort of political social responsibility and it be p the potential for it to become instrumentalized. And you always have to be super careful that work doesn't drift into a space where it is then becoming a mouthpiece for politics. So I think if you have any intuitions and you have any convictions, beliefs, passions, that's what you need to talk about.